Do you know what the world's largest source of recycled steel is? It's not what you think. It's not traditional mines, but rather the automotive recycling industry. Every year in the United States alone, around 12 million vehicles are dismantled and recycled, transforming junkyards into some of the most efficient steel mines ever created by humanity. In this video, we'll discover how old cars become raw materials for buildings, bridges, and even new automobiles. You buy a car for $48,000. After 10 years of use, what value can it still represent? Behind this question lies an industry that generates $60 billion every year. 75% of a vehicle's weight can be recovered, from steel and aluminum to glass and plastics. Each recycling cycle saves up to 74% energy compared to extracting new ore. In the United States, over 95% of end-of-life vehicles go through this system, making automobiles the most recycled consumer product in the world. When a car arrives at the recycling center, the first priority is safety. Technicians begin by removing the battery, the most dangerous electrical hazard. Lead-acid batteries from conventional cars reach an incredible recycling rate of 98%. The lead, the plastic, and even the sulfuric acid are recovered to manufacture new batteries. For electric vehicles, lithium-ion batteries require an even stricter procedure and are sent to specialized facilities. Next comes fluid drainage, the car is lifted, steel probes pierce the tank to extract gasoline, engine oil, transmission fluid, brake fluid, and refrigerant. On average, an end-of-life vehicle still contains several gallons of fuel and fluids. If these substances aren't managed properly, they can cause fires, explosions, or serious pollution. And yet, nothing goes to waste. Once filtered, these fluids are reused to power forklifts and generators at the facility, cutting energy costs significantly. Once secured, the vehicle undergoes systematic dismantling. Wheels are removed first. Used tires, among the hardest ways to decompose, are shredded into rubber granules for asphalt and playgrounds. Steel and aluminum rims go straight to foundries. Windshields and windows are carefully cut out. This laminated glass contains a PVB layer that's recovered for soundproofing and industrial coatings. Doors combine several valuable materials. Metal frames are cut for remelting, while electric motors from windows and locks are dismantled separately to recover copper, plastics, and magnets. Then comes the interior. Seats, dashboards, carpets, all sorted. Wiring is stripped to extract copper, a highly sought after metal. Finally, the engine and transmission, the heaviest and most valuable parts, are removed. Some engines are refurbished and resold. Others are dismantled to recover aluminum, steel, copper, and even precious metals from catalytic converters. Before entering the shredder, hydraulic shears remove the last non-metallic parts, exhaust pipes, large plastic panels, tangled wiring, with dozens of tons of force, these machines clean the chassis in seconds. The bare chassis is now ready for radical transformation. It enters a giant hydraulic press, capable of exerting up to 200 tons of pressure. In minutes, a structure over 13 feet long becomes a compact block, one-tenth of its original volume. Three types of machines can be used. The car baller creates dense cubes easy to transport, up to 40 cars per hour, the car flattener compresses vehicles into flat sheets, faster, cheaper. The shear baller cuts and compresses simultaneously, preparing steel directly for the foundry. These compacted blocks then feed into the shredder, the mechanical heart of the operation. Inside, massive steel shafts with interlocking teeth rotate in opposite directions, tearing the metal into uniform fragments. The noise is deafening, but the efficiency is spectacular. A modern shredder processes up to 150 tons of steel per hour. After shredding, an automated sorting line takes over. Powerful magnets extract carbon steel. Eddy currents deflect aluminum and copper. Plastics and rubbers are separated and discarded. In less than an hour, an entire car becomes pure metals, ready for remelting. The recycled steel bales now enter an electric arc furnace, where the real magic happens. Graphite electrodes release currents of tens of thousands of amps, creating an electric arc as bright as lightning. Within minutes, the temperature rises beyond 2,900 degrees Fahrenheit. Solid steel turns red hot, 
then melts into a glowing ocean of liquid metal. Lime and flux agents are added to remove impurities. Oxygen lances burn away unwanted elements. Sensors monitor the composition in real time, ensuring perfect alloy balance. What was once scrap becomes pure, refined steel. The molten metal flows immediately to the continuous casting line. The brilliant stream enters water-cooled molds, solidifying within seconds to form a hardened shell. Long billets stretch for tens of meters, square for construction, flat for metal sheets. Automated saws cut them into standard segments, each weighing several tons. Then comes hot rolling. Massive rollers press and stretch the billets. With each pass, the steel flattens and lengthens, evolving from a rough block into uniform sheets or coils. High-speed cameras and lasers measure thickness and flatness with microscopic precision. Finally, each coil is cooled, inspected and tested. Ultrasonics for fractures, cameras for surface flaws, tensile tests for strength. Only those that pass every check are stamped and ready for shipping. From an old, seemingly useless car to new steel ready to serve, we've just followed an extraordinary transformation cycle. Let's recap this journey. It starts with securing the vehicle, removing the battery and draining the fluids. Then comes dismantling, where each component finds a second life. The chassis is crushed, shredded, and sorted into pure metals. Those metals are remelted at 2,900 degrees Fahrenheit, reborn as new steel sheets and beams. 12 million vehicles recycled every year in the U.S. alone. 75% of weight recovered. 74% energy saved compared to mining extraction. Each end-of-life vehicle fuels a $60 billion industry, creating jobs and reducing our environmental footprint. Recycling isn't just ecological, it's an essential economic pillar of our modern world. The circular economy isn't a concept of the future. It's happening right now on a massive scale. So next time you see an old rusty car in a junkyard, don't see waste, see a steel mine waiting to be reborn. The steel from your car today might become tomorrow's skyscraper, the bridge between two cities, or the body of a future electric vehicle. Automotive recycling, not the end of a journey, but the beginning of an infinite cycle of transformation and reuse.